With news of the Canadian real estate bubble about to pop and home prices dropping, there is also an affordability crisis with the aggressive increase in interest rates that is making it difficult for existing homeowners to pay their mortgage and first-time home buyers to get into the market altogether. You will especially know what I mean if you live in one of the most expensive cities in the world, Vancouver and Toronto, which continues to be completely unaffordable to the average person. Hi, I'm Gabrielle, a CPA and tax expert, and today I'm going to be covering what is going on in the current real estate market, as well as key things you must consider if you're looking to buy now. What's going on in the current real estate market? On July 15th, the Canadian Real Estate Association released statistics that national home sales are down by 5.6% from May to June, and the number of transactions are down by 23.9% compared to the last June in 2021. According to Jill Udil, chair of of the Canadian Real Estate Association, sale activities continue to slow in the face of rising interest rates and uncertainty. With sales down and new listings up by 4.1% in June, the sales to new listings ratio dropped to 51.7%, which is the lowest level since January 2015 and below the long-term average for the national sales to new listings ratio of 55%. That being said, the home price index was still up by 15% compared to last June, although this was just half the near 30% record increase that was logged this January and February. Interest rates. So how are the interest rates affecting the housing prices? Well, back during the pandemic, the Bank of Canada, BOC for short, lowered the policy interest rates of 1.75% in March 3rd of 2020, all the way down to 0.25% by March 27th, 2020, all in the span of less than one month. This was done to inject liquidity in the market and to keep the market afloat while the world entered a pandemic. People and businesses were able to access capital through cheap borrowed money. However, you and me don't have access to this 0.25% policy interest rate. Instead, banks will refer to the prime rate when lending us money. The prime rate represents the policy rate plus banks' own operating costs. The prime rate was also an all-time low at 2.45%. Usually when you get a mortgage, you will get a mortgage rate based on the prime rate, not the policy rate, plus a pre premium or minus a discount, depending on what offers the banks are giving out at the time. Given insane inflation in the past few months, the Bank of Canada is trying to rein in inflation and dampen demand by increasing borrowing rates so people are discouraged to buy more. Since March of 2020, the policy rate went from 0.25% all the way to 2.5%. That is more than where we were before the pandemic at 1.75%. The last rate hike on July 13th was particularly aggressive at a full 1% rate hike, which exceeded many people's expectations in a bad way, of course. Similarly, the prime rate jumped from 2.45% to now 4.7%. This would be the rate that is relevant for you if you're looking to buy a home and obtain a mortgage. Is right now a good time to buy? What to consider? Just to rewind and look at what happened during the pandemic and why real estate prices skyrocketed. In hindsight, experts are saying that the real estate boom wasn't related to a lack of supply, though it can be part of it, but it was mainly inflated due to low interest rates. In fact, the supply shortage occurred in almost every advanced economy with excessively low rates. BMO argued last year that it was unlikely major cities all around the globe ran out of land at the same time. It was also unlikely that city management failed all at the same time as well. More likely, this was due to excess demand created from easy credit. In addition, the BIS, the Global Central Bank Organ, produced research arguing central banks inflated real estate prices. They released a study attributing the global home price boom to monetary policy. Cheap credit was a primary driver, they argue, not a lack of supply. Monetary policy mistakes were made around the world as a bust in easy growth. So we know that interest rates have an inverse relationship with home prices. As interest rates decrease, borrowing becomes cheaper, increasing demand, and home prices. The opposite is true when interest rates increase, borrowing becomes more expensive, decreasing demand, and home prices. Let's talk about what mortgage rates you are currently dealing with if you are looking to buy. Current mortgage rates. Based on one of the lowest mortgage rates out on the market, HSBC is offering a five-year fixed close 
lows of 5.09%, which means your rate won't change for five years. They're also offering a five-year variable close rate of 3.99%, which means if we are referring back to the current prime rate of 4.7%, they're offering a discount of prime minus 0.71%. Variable means that your underlying interest payments will fluctuate depending on the prime rate increasing or decreasing. However, whether you can afford your mortgage payments won't be the only thing you need to consider. Banks will also do what is called the stress test, which would be the determining factor on whether you can get a mortgage. Stress test. Something that seemed to fly under the radar and catch people by surprise is the stress test. It is mandatory for you to pass a stress test if you want to qualify for a mortgage. The stress test checks that you can afford payments at a higher interest rate than the actual rate that you negotiate with your bank. Banks must use the higher interest rate of either 5.25% or the interest rate you negotiate with a lender plus 2%. For example, if we are going to take the current mortgage rate of 3.99%, which is the variable five year, it means you need to be able to afford payments based on the higher of 5.25% or 3.99% plus 2%, which is 5.99%. So in this case, 5.99% or we'll just call it 6% is the higher interest rate that you need to afford. You can actually check out the mortgage qualifier tool to see if you could buy a home in Canada. The bank makes sure you aren't too leveraged by calculating that you're gross debt service, which is GDS ratio, doesn't exceed 32%. And that total debt service or TDS ratio doesn't exceed 40%. In the debt calculations, they take into consideration some of your common expenses, such as heating costs, property taxes, credit card payments, car payments, and any other loans you may have. So for example, if you are eyeing a $500,000 condo and have $50,000 saved up, which is 10% deposit, and you have a $60,000 salary with some of these anticipated expenses, you will not be able to qualify for a alone since your GDS is 61% and your TDS is 70%. In this case, you either need to save more of a deposit to lower your mortgage, increase your income to cover anticipated expenses, or reduce and or pay off your other debt. Using the same example, you'll be able to purchase a $500,000 condo with a 10% deposit if you earn $115,000 per year or save up 60% deposit. Maybe that is why you have something like this in the news where you need to have income of over $220,000 to buy a home in Toronto and Vancouver. The affordability with already expensive home prices is not helping with rising interest rates. There may be a sweet spot where the decrease in home prices might make it worthwhile compared to the increase in interest rate payments, but that would be a tricky thing to time. So for example, a $500,000 home might drop by 10% to $450,000, and this would increase your chances to be eligible for a mortgage, but not quite yet at GDS of 50.34% and TDS at 59.34%. So unless the price of homes drop drastically or the interest rates come down again, you need to really get creative with saving more money or making more money. Building equity versus rent. If you're able to afford a home, congratulations. But is it really worth it to be buying compared to renting? Among benefits of being a homeowner and calling a place your own, you get the perks of building equity. This means that your monthly payments go towards the principal of the home where you can one day outright own your home with no mortgage. You can also benefit from any appreciation in the value of the home over time. One way to see if buying a home is worth it for you is to see how much of your principal versus interest payments go towards the mortgage. You can see here that if you get a $450,000 mortgage at the current rate of 3.99% and you have a 10% deposit, your monthly payments are $2,438 based on this mortgage calculator. You need to compare this to your current rent and if it's an amount you can afford to pay. Your current rent may be $2,000, so it may be outside of your current monthly budget, though you also need to consider that of the $2,438, $908 go towards your principal payments, which is building your equity, and $1,530 goes towards your interest payments, which is the cost of the mortgage. In this case, the money that you throw away is $1,530, which is actually less than your current rent of $2,000. But the important point here is you need to be able to afford the whole entire monthly payment, which is the principal plus interest, which is higher than your current rent of $2,000. You will also notice that over time, your principal payments increase and your interest payments decrease. 
Of course, you also need to factor in other costs such as strata fees, home insurance, property taxes to see if the numbers work for you and that you are not stretching yourself too thin. Finding affordable homes. I don't want to make the affordability crisis in Canada any more dreary than it is, but there are options and Canada does have more affordable home prices in cities outside of Vancouver and Toronto. As you can see here, the cities in blue are cities with home prices under the Canadian average of $808,400 with the cheapest home that you can buy being just $267,000 in Quebec. But I know it's not easy to you know, uproot and move to a new city that you don't know. If buying a home in Vancouver or Toronto is a goal of yours, you could totally do it with a bit of discipline around your money and learning how to manage it. I actually have videos on saving and budgeting money, so feel free to check it out here. If you found my video useful today, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!